let's see here. The first thing I wanted to note is that I changed the order of um, the classes. So the first class is going to be on meta meditation. And then the second class right now, as it's planned, I might even change that, is going to be on kind of more Vipassana, a type of noting. But I want to also talk, and that's a good segue into a little bit of how I teach. So there are the wisdom practices, which are like, you know, Vipassana, insight, and then there are the heart practices. And in my mind, um, the heart practices get neglected. And the heart practices are also, in my mind, the foundation for the practice and actually the foundation for building just general mental health. I think certainly the insight practices help with mental health and well being, et cetera, but the heart practices have an inherent like balancing aspect to them that really make a lot of sense to strategically um, insert at the beginning of your practice and make the foundation of your practice. And the heart practices are what you always go back. When you need uh, when you need respite, because also the insight practices can be des destabilizing and difficult, because you're seeing lots of insights, and when you see an insight, there is actually grieving and difficulty that comes up because a part of you actually dies. And what you want to do is have a foundation of wellness, actually love and happiness, so that you can handle the upsets that come along with deeper insight practice. So that's, uh, that's uh, I think, an important uh, preliminary or preface to the course. OK, another couple of things about how, to run, how we're going to run the course. So um, during the class, and if I'm talking or we're doing like a guided meditation and you have a question, type it into the chat. It'll be over to your left side. Um, so just type it into the chat, and I'll get to the question. Um, then we'll have at least two periods of question and answer each class. Um, so just simply unmute yourself and speak up if you like, but you can always type your uh, question into the chat. Also, if you want to be private about it, you can just send it to me as a direct and I'll read it, but I won't read your name, or you can send it to the group. Either way is fine. Um, what else? Again, my internet might crap out on me. If so, just be patient. I'll come back in a moment. Uh, I don't think it'll happen. Mm. Another thing. So obviously there'll be themes that I'm gonna teach about, but if you have a question about meditation generally, and, I'm, and it doesn't seem like it fits into the class, no problem, ask it anyway. I wanna deal with, I, I want this class to try to deal with most in, of any of your meditation questions. So it can be, it can be kind of a little bit tangential, it's fine. Bring it up in, in the class. And if it's way too tangential, I'll say, okay, stay on the call and I'll discuss it with you after the call. So that's how we'll handle it. All right. Okay, something else about, I wanted to mention how I teach. So I teach in a skillful means. I, I teach in a way of skillful means. So. I don't, I'm not worried about truth. I don't know what truth is, and I don't even know the concept's terribly useful. But I do think, I do like skillful means. What does skillful mean? What does that mean? It means doing what works. So we want results. We want you to become happier. We want you to have insight, ease, well being, actually better connection with others, and also to be a source of sukkur and support to others in as much as that your practice grows. That's what counts, and I'm not worried about truth per se. So uh, I uh, hope to contradict myself a lot. And uh, so if I'm contradicting myself, it's fine. I'm not pointing to a truth, it's just skillful means. And if there's any questions about that, I can answer that. All right, moving on. Um, okay, so this is kind of an interesting place to jump off. So again, today we're going to be discussing metta meditation, loving kindness, which means friendliness. Now, why would we want to cultivate friendliness and love? Well, one good reason is that according to studies, 85% of the average 
person's thoughts are negative. We have a negativity bias. And the upshot is that that can be corrected, but it takes a lot of practice. And that's what we're gonna be focusing on. So now that gets me to my next point. What is meditation? So really starting out at the, begin at, at the beginning, right? Uh, let's see, I think John, John, you said that you were like really a beginner. So, okay, great. This is like a real beginner's question. What is meditation? So in my mind, meditation can be summed up as mind training. We're training the mind. All meditation falls under mind training. Uh, and then, you know, we can get into some like greater details, like the difference between mindfulness and, you know, other forms of meditation, but meditation means mind training. So what are we going to be doing here with metta, loving kindness? We're going to be particularly training the quality of love, kindness, compassion, and friendliness. And let me reiterate that point. The definition for loving kindness or metta, which is an ancient Buddhist meditation technique, the definition I like the best is friendliness. So we're actually learning to be friendly with ourselves and friendly with others. And that is the basis for the practice. Okay. All right, so a little bit more about, let's see here. A little bit, okay, so what we're actually gonna do is very quickly, we're gonna do a guided meditation. So go ahead and let's pick up the shoulders and then just roll them back. Take the crown of the head right here and push it up towards the ceiling and that aligns everything. Okay, good. Now just settling into the space, opening up to what is, and now smiling just gently. And what we're gonna do here is a contemplation meditation. So here we go. So this is the question. Is it not so that all beings just want happiness? And now I'm gonna ask you this question. Is it not so that all you want is happiness? And now come into a space of appreciating this desire for happiness in your own being. And it's just so natural. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. I just want happiness. And if the thought fade, just bring it back. You can use a question to support the meditation. Do I want happiness? Is that so? So getting in touch with this quality of just wanting happiness. And this desire existed before you were born. This desire exists in every living being, in every cell, even in a single cell organism, the desire to be happy is there. Now here's another question. Did you choose to want to be happy? I didn't. It's just how things are. And so there's this kind of gentle, sweet allowing of the desire to be happy. Okay, good. Now we're going to con contemplate this in others. As it seems to you, is it not so that others just want to be happy? So just staying with that thought, 
staying with that reflection. Aha. Uh -huh. Others just want happiness. And I just want happiness. And now I'm going to guide you to look at the camaraderie. The fact that we're all in this together, that we all want happiness in the same way. And there's this quality of deep, deep knowing. There's a knowing, aha, yes. I know this desire for happiness and I know it's in others. And we're knowing it from a place that is before concept. We're knowing it in the body. The desire for happiness. And it's so blameless. Okay, good. All right, the next issue we're going to look at is skillfulness of action. So think back to how you want to be happy. And sometimes you've been very skillful in attaining happiness. Like maybe you've meditated or maybe you did service to others, you did acts of generosity, you cared for others, you were kind. And, and then there's an appreciation of, aha, this is skillful. This is skillful. This works. And then also, Look inside yourself and see how you've been unskillful. Like sometimes you didn't go about that very well. It was kind of a disaster, <laughs> right? You know, you tried to attain happiness through a, a means that didn't work, through a method that didn't work. And now let's continue with that contemplation towards others. Aha. They just want happiness and they've either done it in a skillful way or an unskillful way. Okay, good. All right, now we'll come out of the meditation. So that's just kind of softening us all up and getting us into a space of really understanding what this meditation practice is all about. Okay, let's here. Okay, good. So, all right, moving on. So what is metta meditation? Metta is, again, this quality of cultivating. It's to cultivate friendliness. So when we actually do the meditation itself, the primary object, the thing that we're going to focus on is the feeling of friendliness in the body and in the mind. So this quality of friendliness. Now we're gonna go about supporting that quality through many different ways. One thing we're gonna do is we're gonna smile. We're also going to come up with images. We're gonna see the person that we're sending the, the matter to and we're gonna see them smiling. And then we're gonna see ourselves smiling. And so that's usually using visualization to support the quality of metta. We're also gonna use verbalization. You could say even like a mantra. The, the verbalization that I'm going to recommend is, may you be happy, may you be happy, may you be happy. And every time we hear the verbalization, that intensifies and supports the feeling. And every time we employ the visualization, that also supports and intensifies the feeling of metta. Okay, that's how we'll do it. Okay, great. So I think it's kind of starting to be obvious why you would want to do this practice. I think at this point we're it's getting somewhat clear, but I'll just go a little bit further into this. And this is really important. And I actually think this issue of why is important to almost everybody that's spoken up here because everybody's mentioned some issue. Most people have mentioned an issue around consistency of practice. And what I see there is motivation, like faith, faith that the practice has an effect and then the motivation to do it. So when we 
deeply understand the reasons why we do something, it's, it's easier to do that thing. So now we're going to go into why we would even want to do this practice. And to be clear, we're free people and we should make decisions based on information. So here we go. So why? So in a sense, doing metta meditation gives you what you want. It brings about happiness and love by doing the meditation itself. Okay, and, and you know, you, you can train it such that a kind of attitude of friendliness can be your default if you train it enough. It makes you more kind and loving with yourself and with others. This brings about more harmonious relations with others. Also, it purifies you. Now, that's maybe strange language. So, what do I mean by that? So, it shows you where you are still hateful cruel, self-centered, dismissive, unkind, etc. And it shows you the path how to correct that. So uh, one of my teachers always said, the Dharma works through contrast. So when you get up into a kind of an exalted and altered state of metta, then all of a sudden you can see your problematic quality. You can see where you're still hateful. You can see where you're irritable, where you're cruel, where you lack friendliness. You know, uh, one, a teacher I follow, George Haas, really good teacher, he says, some, uh, one of his phrases that he likes to repeat is, what water, says the fish. Like if you're in it, you can't see it. You have to actually step away from it to see it. So metta brings you into a place where you can see your problems a lot more clearly. Okay, good. Um, also, Meta brings up what your problems are, but it also equips you with the means for dealing with your problems because the means for dealing with your problems are kindness, being sweet and understanding with yourself. Okay, good. Also, something I mentioned that I would cover in the class is ethics. And we're not going to get too deep into it right now, but all ethics are based on not harming. So when we develop metta, loving kindness, we, it is in the development is included the desire not to harm. If you have love and friendliness towards others and towards yourself, then it's natural that you don't want to harm. So you're creating the foundational condition for ethics. So, and then to be clear, this, so this is like a genuine desire, a genuine motivation for ethics, whereas you know, there are other motivations for ethics which are okay, like not wanting to get in trouble, not wanting to lose face, et cetera. And these are good uh, motivations for ethics, but a better motivation is the desire not to Okay, something else that I already alluded to is that metta helps you connect with others. Like the way that you actually connect with others is through friendliness and love. And, you know, loneliness is more and more a problem in our society. And, you know, loneliness is like this feeling of disconnection and metta helps with that issue. Another issue that's already been mentioned a little bit, but I want to go further into it. So. Metta, like mixing metta into your other practices. So like if you do insight practices, if you mix metta in with that, it'll be more enjoyable and there'll be more bliss. And now why is that important? Well, it's a self, it's a self standalone virtue, right? Enjoyment is good. But it encourages and motivates you to practice more because for practice to really resonate and for you to do enough of it, you have to, it has to become a refuge for you. You've got to want to do it. So metta helps you want to practice more. Okay, um, let's see here. And you know, fundamentally with metta, we set up a, uh, a positive feedback loop. Metta feels good. The more it feels good, the more we want to do it. The more we want to do it, the better it feels. And then all of a sudden, this is how you create real momentum in your practice. All righty, I think all that's clear. Okay, so that's all good and well, but what should you watch out for? 
I mean, there are problems with uh, meditation generally, and then also with practicing metta, but we can, you know, to be, what is it? To be forewarned is to be forearmed. I think there's an expression in English. So we want, I want to forewarn you. So, um, only people, only the imperfect need to practice. So if you've got metta down perfectly, you, you know, you don't need to practice. You're good. So all of us are struggling. All of us are not too good at this. And so we're getting better at it. And you can't expect your practice to be perfect. It's going to be messy. There's going to be groping and grasping in the dark until you get a handle on it. And you really want to be patient with yourself. And I know that all of you who have meditation experience know, oh, it is messy. It's kind of like all mixed. And it's like, ugh, you can't quite figure it out. And it doesn't quite go according to plan. But yeah. All right, what else? Um, subtle is significant. I'm going to repeat that. Subtle is significant. What does that mean? It means that um, you might just feel just a, just a touch of metta, just a touch of loving kindness. That counts. It's a seed quality. It's, it's a beginning. And we cultivate that and we grow it and we tend it. And so what you don't want to do is like, oh, I can barely feel it out of hell with this. No. We want to persevere. All right, good. Another thing, it might feel inauthentic. It's very, very important. Generally speaking, when you start with metta, it'll feel funny and like it won't resonate with you and it's like you're being fake. Um, it's not a problem, just keep going. It's, everybody feels that way. Okay, good, what else? Um, this is very important. Metta loving kindness is not a justification to beat up on yourself like we are aiming towards metta we are aiming towards loving kindness and we're all going to fall short and it's not a justification to be hard on yourself also like ethics ethics are something we strive towards they're not a way to beat ourselves like we we all fail none of our ethics is perfect so we're also learning to be kind and compassionate with ourselves. Another thing, and this is extremely important, and this applies to all meditation forms. You can't judge meditation by how it feels in the moment. You need to judge it by how much you transform in your daily life. So I'm going to repeat that. You can't judge your practice by how it feels. It might feel horrendous. It might feel awful. And all of you that have been on retreat, especially the Goenka retreats, those are tough, um, you know how difficult meditation can be. And it can be like, oh, this is awful. I hate this. Oh, I hate me. I hate, <laughs> I hate my teachers. I hate everybody that told me about meditation. But then you get back in your daily life and you're like, oh, yeah, okay. I'm not as angry. Things are good. Yep. Hey, how you doing? And, and you know, things are good, right? So that's the thing you need to be reminded of. You can't judge the practice by how it feels. You judge it by your daily life. Extremely important. All right, moving on. Um, another thing. People struggle often with metta towards themselves. Also, sometimes people struggle with metta towards others. If you struggle with one, then focus on the other. Because focusing on metta towards others will teach you how to have metta towards yourself. Focusing on metta towards yourself will teach you how to have metta towards others. So again, be patient. Another thing. So I'm going to make some suggestions. None of this is like the truth or exactly how you should do it. You want to make the practice your own. Um, modify it such that it resonates with you. Because if, it, if you don't modify it and make it your own, you'll generally not do it. And if you don't do it, there's zero value, nothing. Forget about it. You have to mold it to yourself and make it resonate okay good moving on i'll make a few more points and then we can open up to questions so when we so first off service is very important in a sense every, much of what we do in terms of our behavior ultimately should be of service to others our jobs are all service oriented um, much of our other actions are service oriented. And so by cultivating the quality of love and friendliness, 
we can actually optimize further. Um, okay, basically that's, that's that point. So now moving on to how do we do the practice? I'm gonna give you like one minute of instructions as to how to do the practice, but then I'll really reiterate it a lot in the guided practice. So there'll be lots of time, it'll, there'll be lots of examples and, and explanations for how we practice, but I'm just gonna mention how you do the method practice. So like I said earlier, the quality of loving kindness is the primary object. And then we support the primary object of meditation through smiling, through visualization, like seeing the other person that we're sending the method toward, smile, imagining ourselves smiling, imagining white light and love going towards them. Again, that's part of the visualization. And also the internal talk, the mantra, the verbalization. So may you be well, happy and peaceful. May you be well, happy and peaceful. So that's really how you do the practice. And then you just go through a series of people, then you do a geographic version. When you do this on your own, please modify this however you see fit. Use the verbiage that resonates for you. May you be happy, may you be happy, may you be well, may you be well, however you want to do it. Okay, that's all I got in terms of the lecture. Let's open it up to questions before we do the guided practice, and then we'll have another opportunity for questions after guided practice. So if you want, you can just type your questions into the chat or just unmute yourself and speak up. What's not clear? What can I help to clarify? Uh, how can I help? Okay, so let's give it another moment or two. Going once, going twice, three times. Okay, good. All right, so we'll, um, we'll just move on to guided practice. Oh, wait, no, here we go. Um, Ida says, um, when you say everyone wants to be happy, what do you mean by happy? Oh, it's a good question. Jeez. The first answer that comes up is I'm not sure. Um, but let's see here. I don't know, you know, just this, uh, this quality of like smiling, being at ease, um, a kind of wellness. Um, to, to draw from attachment theory, you can, uh, what from Western psychology attachment theory, you can think of it as, you know, attunement, connection, safety, um, a, like an, a, a confidence to explore your world, um, an ability to soothe yourself or get soothing from others. What else? Yeah, that's how I would define happiness. I hope that that spoke to, um, uh, uh, I hope that spoke to your question. Okay. Um, oh, interesting. It, okay, this is interesting, Ida. You say, I'm not sure if everyone wants it. I've met people that don't want it. In my mind, like, okay, you know how you, you can be hungry, but maybe you're like really, really preoccupied or, 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 or involved in something and you're not even aware that you're hungry. So I would say that there's a difference between knowing that you want happiness and still wanting happiness and wanting happiness, but not knowing. So I think there's a difference. That would be how I would answer the question. I'm not sure if that um, spoke to your question or not either. Okay, Alan, and then feel free to follow up if you have another follow-up question. Okay, Alan says, I want to know what happiness is in this context. Um, you know what would also work is friendliness, this quality of friendliness. So, okay, let's do a quick half a minute meditation. So, okay, you know, imagine seeing a friend that you've not seen for 10 years and it's your best friend. And now smile broadly and then look at them. You're looking in their eyes, they're looking in your eyes. There's a feeling of attunement and connection and love. And this is friendliness. 
So that's the definition that I want you to use for happiness. The feeling of seeing a friend you've not seen in 10 years. That's what I want. Okay. Um, good. Any other questions? Those are good questions. Okay, going once, going twice. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think uh, Julian says happiness is connection. Connection is a big, big part of happiness. And that's why loneliness is so bad for your happiness and for your health. And again, Meta is like helps you, it like really helps you figure out how to not be lonely and how to connect with others. Okay, good. All right, I think uh, we'll go ahead and wrap it up there.